Now we will see the development of the EM algorithms for multivariate normal distribution. And to start with, we'll, we'll start with this instance where the parameters of uh, or the distribution of our X here are following uh, multivariate normal distribution for each group. So basically we have MI and SI, which are describing the distribution, the, the mean vector and the covariance matrix associated to group GI. So we are solving this for, for this parameterization. The parameterization is including the, for all groups, the higher, the mean vector and the covariance matrix. Um, now the development is this one. So we, we first get, plug in the, the, the equation of the multivariate normal distribution here. We have the log of all this. All this is the normal density function. So the density function for the normal distribution, we, we have this summing over all samples, over all groups, HIT, which is making the association the, between the, the sample and the group, log the normal distribution function. And we, we compute the partial derivative of that equal to zero. That, that is the way we are following. This is the, the equation we need to solve in order to obtain the equations, in order to make the updates with our EM algorithms using the multivariate normal distribution. And, and as such, <clears throat> first we will uh, make the partial derivatives and, and, and this lead us directly to, to that formulation where we choose some simplification. We still are dealing with the partial derivatives uh, of, of, of this, so HI times what is here basically. And next step will be to say, okay, the partial derivative according to that is equal simply to, so the partial derivative of this is equal to that. So we are summing over only the T now because the partial derivative of MI was of interest only when the summation when I is equal to J. So partial derivative according to MJ, in fact, was equal to something different from zero for that summation when the index i was equal to j. So basically here you can see that we, we, we move from the h i t to the h h j j t and m j also, because this is the only time, the only uh, point in the summation where when h is equal to j, where the partial derivative is different from zero. And all this <coughs> correspond to, to that. The next step tell us that, okay, just, just splitting, in, splitting this around, we just keep the H, G, T, X, T, the summation of that is equal to, let get that part on the other side. So we will have this equal to M, J, summation of H, G, T here. And by moving things around, we, we have this formulation. We have MJ, so the, the, the mean vector for the group J for, uh, for so the parameter M of our normal distribution for group J is equal to this thing. So basically the sum of XT times HGT divided by the sum of HGT. And, and this, is, this is totally coherent with what we we expect in the sense that we are looking at the association between XT and the group J. The difference compared to the to k-means here is that the association is not crisp, is not binary, it's not just zero or one, the HGT is between zero and one. So it's more probabilistic assignment. So the, the average value take into account this, I would say membership probabilistic association between XT and group J. So we use that as a weight when summing the value of h of xt here. Uh, and we are dividing by the sum of h, g, t. So basically, we are normalizing everything according to the, the sum of, of all uh, h, g, t that we have here. And that gives us the estimation of the center mj for our multivariate normal distribution for this group. Now we will solve the same thing for the covariance matrix. So here the derivative according to the big S J. Uh, so we have the formulation here. So we summation over T over I, H I T log the 
density probability the density function of the multivariate normal distribution, everything equal to zero. The result is that thing. So directly solving this partial equations, partial derivatives equal to zero, uh, lead us to an estimation of the covariance matrix that is equal to the sum of HGT here, which is somehow waiting for each instance. It's, a, it's, 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 it's value in the computation of the covariance matrix uh, according to that group uh, J, G, J. And uh, uh, we need first to have the vector means to be evaluated. So we have these and we are basically this corresponds basically to the usual way of computing, evaluating the covariance, of estimating the covariance matrix from the data with the maximum likelihood. And we are dividing by the summation of HGT here uh, directly. So, of course, I skip all the, the details because solving this, getting from this thing here to that thing here, is uh, subtle. You know, it requires the use of the spectral theorem. It is completely out of scope from the current course. So I just skip these things. You just have to take it. But basically, this is the, the results we will obtain when we are making the, the full development for, for, for that partial derivative and trying to solve it for covariance matrix. So now with the multivariate normal law, we just basically apply, make the computation of the partial derivative according to each parameters of the underlying density function for each group. So uh, at the step E, basically we are evaluating HIT. So this is simply to plug in uh, the, 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 the equation of the, of the normal, multivariate normal law and uh, we are making this and making some simplification as everything is, is equal uh, at the denominator and denominator. So uh, the, the, the final results, the final way to estimate this HIT is, is that way. So this is really the, the results we have. And then for the step M, we are evaluating the parameterization for our model with the prior pi i the mean vector mi and the covariance matrix si, and this for all groups, groups from one to k. This is our parameters we want to estimate. We go through the partial der derivatives equal to one of the, of the log likelihood. And uh, we've got first this result, which is obtained in general. So this is the same for all underlying distribution that we can use. The two other results are specific to the density function we are using. So here with the multivariate normal law, we've got these results, which have just been developed. And these are kind of coherent with the estimation we are usually making uh, to maximum likelihood. Because this is basically maximum likelihood estimation we are making here, but in the context of clustering with EM. So an illustration of the EM algorithms with multivariate normal law. Here is, uh, we have some points. We see that uh, it's, it's, there's two set of points. We have this set of points here and that one. But for now, we are just starting with initializing the algorithm in some, uh, I would say, arbitrary random way. So we have these two uh, normal density functions, multivariate normal density T's that are given like this, just an arbitrary starting point. And from that, we are applying EM. At first, they kind of merge all together. So the two distribution are overlapping. And after we need to get into some iteration, but after some time, they split in two. And this is where really the, 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 the nice modeling come out is when they are splitting in two, we, are, we have two distributions that are kind of fit over the, the, the points of uh, our data set. So the samples of our data set are estimated quite well with these two, these two distribution. So it's just some refinement we see here. So this is basically the kind of results we can obtain with the multivariate normal distribution. 